I'm Lou Scharf, and I'm standing right beside a golden silk orb weaver spider web, which is located right here in my front yard in Auburn, Alabama. This is a truly unique spider, not only in terms of its structure, its behavior and activities, but of its web design. Uh, if I can be very careful about it, I'm just pointing out to you the spider, which hopefully you can see at this point. It's a female uh, golden silk orb weaver. You can tell that by the size. She's very large, probably 10 times the size of her counterpart, the male um, orb, orb weaver spider. Uh, she is coming down from the top of her web to start to feast on several of these insects that I point to here that she captured over the last few nights and wrapped up uh, for later consumption. These are remarkable spiders. The, the web is extremely large and extends from this azalea bush here over to a magnolia tree, which is about six feet or six and a half to seven feet away. And that's just another uh, remarkable example of the capabilities uh, of this spider. To give you a little more perspective of the uh, capabilities of this spider, the web starts over here on your right with this azalea bush, and then the strands move all the way over here to this magnolia tree. Uh, which uh, fastens uh, the, the, the web to the other side of the, of the yard. So it is just remarkable how these spiders uh, <laughs> reach these kinds of lengths and, uh, and build these kinds of webs is just uh, remarkable and indescribable. What I'd like to do now is to lead you through some of the uh, rather remarkable facts about the activities, the capabilities, uh, the behaviors uh, patterns of, of these spiders. So come along with me and uh, I hope you enjoy this ride. Golden silk orb weavers um, are actually pretty widespread in warmer regions throughout the world, um, including the southeast U.S. They range throughout the, throughout the southeast from North Carolina to Texas. Females uh, are about uh, one and a half to two inches in length. Uh, that's not including the leg span. Probably ten times the size of her counterpart, the male. color of these spiders uh, vary from reddish to greenish yellow in color with um, a distinctive whiteness on the what is called the cephalothorax, uh, the, the, sort of the middle section of the spider. Most of them have striped legs for weaving uh, and their contrast of dark brown and black and green-yellow allows warning and repelling of potential predators, uh, to which their venom might be of very little danger. These spiders look for relatively dense vegetation where the webs can be set up in areas that uh, insects will regularly fly through them. Uh, urban environments are, are also very attractive due to the large prey concentrations and uh, lower levels of predation. The webs of these uh, spiders are quite complex with a fine meshed orb suspended in a maze of, uh, of what we call barrier webs. This image shows a gravid female. Uh, gravid meaning heavy with eggs. You'll note the uh, swollen abdomen uh, with this female. The females uh, produce an egg sac in the surrounding environments of the web to protect their eggs. 
Um, the eggs are deposited on a, on a silk platform and then covered in loose silk to form a sack. These sacks can contain from 300 to 3,000 eggs depending on mating success. Once hatched, the spiderlings inhabit a communal web to begin their lives. Here is a good lateral shot of the spider showing a little more detail of her web. And uh, I'm coming right up to her here. Uh, a remarkable uh, spider in every respect. Uh, beautiful coloration. Here she's moving some of her, her legs uh, a bit. And uh, now she's checking me out a little bit and uh, to see what uh, I'm going to do. And there she goes back up. Here is a view of the underside of the spider, the so-called ventral view. Uh, note the remarkable uh, intricacy of the pattern and coloration uh, of the spider, particularly on the abdomen. And it's at the end of the abdomen, the posterior part of the abdomen, where the uh, material is secreted uh, which forms the, uh, the web. Spinnerets are usually on the underside of a spider's abdomen, which is shown in this uh, photo. The spinnerets are used to extrude silk uh, to build the webs. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer uh, here with my finger. Yeah, she's checking me out. Again, I don't want to uh, bother her or uh, keep her from her meal, so we'll uh, quit at this point. This species of spider uh, targets many different organisms as prey, ranging from small flies and beetles to even cicadas and locusts. Uh, as a result of their strong web structure, uh, small birds and even bats can also become trapped and fed upon. This image attests to the strength of the spider web. This uh, female ruby-throated hummingbird was caught in a golden silk spider web in my backyard uh, and was being approached from the top of the web by the female spider. Because the web was located beyond reach in a tree, I ultimately had to use a water hose uh, to free the bird for, which flew away um, unharmed. Spider silk is almost as strong as some of the synthetic polymers. Um, it's finer than the human hair uh, and it's able to keep its strength at very low temperatures. Small prey, such as flies and beetles, as we see here, uh, are captured alive in the, in the web and then removed from the web and wrapped in silk. As you can see in this footage, uh, the female spider is actually wrapping the insect in, uh, in the filaments of the web. The spider also uh, typically creates caches of food for storage which can be found above the hub of the web, as we see here, and can contain uh, probably up to as many as 12 to 15 prey items. Uh, and these items are arranged in a line vertically and are wrapped in silk to reduce dehydration. The purpose of these caches is to have a backup food source when prey is scarce, and occasionally to provide bait to attract more prey to the web. Here we see the female uh, spider uh, ready to consume one of the insects uh, previously caught in her cache uh, of insects. Uh, as you can see, she is moving towards the insect, which in this case is uh, 
still wrapped up in, uh, in silk. Uh, she begins to pull it uh, with her legs towards her mouth parts uh, for consumption. So why is the golden silk spider important? Well, first of all, it's a very beneficial farm and garden insect as it eats flying insect pests such as mosquitoes, wasps, and flies. Secondly, um, the silk derived from the golden silk spider uh, is an important subject in molecular biology research in helping scientists to better understand the makeup of natural biopolymers and how they are formed. Because of this work, uh, and because of the fact that the silk is stronger than some synthetic polymers, it is now being evaluated for various industrial and medical applications. And most importantly, the silk is biodegradable. Thirdly, the silk is used to build fish nets in Asia and other parts of the world. And finally, uh, the spider is just an important part of our ecosystem that helps maintain a balance uh, of our environment, uh, a balance in terms of uh, biodiversity, uh, a balance in terms of um, predator competition. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little video and found it to be informative and hopefully enjoyable. This spider is very unique and an important component of our ecosystem. But it is more than just your itsy bitsy spider. Thanks for watching and enjoy nature.